Hey you guys, Irene Lyon here and welcome to this video. This video I've been trying to record a few times and I keep stopping because it's such a big topic that I don't know where to start and where to finish. So I'm just gonna go and we're gonna see where it goes. Right now we're in a very unique time of the year. It's not unique to me, but for many it is. It's that time where we transition from this calendar year or calendar December month to January, New Year's resolutions, which are like the biggest bullshit reason to start self-improvement, in my opinion. Now, a little backstory, I used to be in the fitness industry. That was what I did pretty much all of my 20s and early 30s, from like 1995 to like 2003, 4. I was an exercise science major, so I was working in these rec centers and fitness centers and teaching people how to exercise and put together a plan and even nutrition counseling and all this stuff. And what pained me, and one of the reasons I got out of that industry, other than the fact that I hated cleaning treadmills because that was one of the jobs that we had to do at the rec centers, but it's that people didn't follow through. They didn't follow through. They would come in and want to start exercising. And I would say for every 20 people that came in, maybe two would, would continue. You know, if I was to go back to these gyms, whether it's the one in Vancouver that I worked at or the one in Whistler, um, there might be two of the 20 people still there, you know, being more diverse in their workouts, doing something to continue to challenge their, their bodies. They are dedicated. But for the other 18, they're not there. They're doing something else. They're not consistent. And a lot of people think it's lack of drive. It's lack of discipline. It's lack of getting out of bed in the morning. It's, you know, not having an accountability buddy, all this stuff. And while some of that might be true, as I've aged now that I'm in my 40s, and I now am working with deeper levels of human experience, specifically the nervous system and the brain and how trauma sets into our system and keeps us from being what we're supposed to be. The more I'm in this and the more I see what happens when people heal at that root nervous system stress physiology level, they start to exercise, they start to move, they start to eat better they become less shameful around eating something that isn't healthy. And I just am I'm wondering if we're ever going to wake up to this. I hope we are. You know, the other day, um, a client of mine who has been struggling to lose weight ha came in and she was like, I'm just moving all of a sudden again. I'm wanting to walk, I'm wanting to be active. And it's because this person is no longer in a deep shutdown. They aren't in a deep sh nervous system freeze, which is a physiological thing. It's not in the head. It's in the, in the nervous system, which is invisible, which is why it's so hard to work with this and why a lot of people don't think to work with it because we can't see it. We don't touch it. And so this person is starting to move more. I'm like, great, move. That's your system internally being driven as opposed to this external I should go to the gym because my doctor tells me or XYZ. The other thing that I'm seeing is as people get more regulated, more healthy in their nervous system, which means to take out past traumas and heal past traumas that are still like lingering in the system, as people heal that stuff, as they grow more internal capacity in their body to sense and feel and experience their emotions, their, their, the qualities in their body, the blood you know, coursing through their veins, their digestion working, all these things, their intuition, knowing when something is dangerous versus not. As these people start to get into that sense, those internal senses, they start to know, start to sniff out the foods that they're supposed to eat, the foods they're supposed to avoid. Maybe they need more salt that day. Maybe they need to eat more protein. Maybe they need to have more vegetables. Because you see, I'm not someone that's gonna say, you should eat this kind of diet because that's a healthy diet, or you should do this kind of exercise because that's good exercise. All of it is important, and what we're not doing is we're not teaching people how to listen we have trained it out of ourselves from little children how to not feel, how to not sense, how to be good, how to be right, how to fit the mold. And we gotta get out of this. 
we have to get out of this. Otherwise, people are gonna go into those gyms next week, sign up for this, sign up for spin, sign up for yoga, sign up for that meditation class, and not realize that they are putting these things on top of a very unstable and shaky house that has no foundation. Often people just wanna get in there, I just gotta get a sweat, that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you know that there is something in you that struggles to be internally motivated, that you always need to pay someone so that you show up at the gym, or that you always need a buddy, or that you always need some form of accountability tactic of guilt or shame to eat well, there's something not right. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say if you're finding yourself leaning towards this, I should start this, stop, pause, and find out what is really going on there. Perhaps you do need to start exercising. Perhaps you do need to start improving your diet. But listen to the motivations, listen to the internal qualities. And if you can't listen, which by the way, is common, it's epidemic, so do not feel bad if you can't listen. If you can't listen, learn how to listen. Download my stuff, my free stuff. Learn from a somatic therapist, doesn't have to be through me. Just learn how to listen to what is called your interoception, your internal perception of your internal environment. Learn how to know when your stress physiology is through the roof rather than just trying to calm down and stuff it all in. If you feel tears, cry. If you feel happy, laugh. If you're angry, get angry. I've got some other resources that can help you with that. But I think 2017 for me is gonna be about just constantly hitting home to you, to those out there, to my clients, to my people. You need to learn how to listen to yourself. If you can't listen to the internal, A, you won't know what your system needs, and B, number two, it will stop talking to you, right? Our intuition is not some woo-woo thing. It's actually very biological. And many of us have lost that inner knowing, that inner intuition. And because of that, we make crappy decisions. We get in contact with people that are bad for us. We do bad business deals. We, we don't know when to start or stop things. Our boundaries are very weak when we don't have that intuitive, scientific, biological embodiment. So that's really more, this is more of maybe a rant, I'm not sure, but be very cautious about you, how you enter into this whole New Year's resolution thing. To me, it really should be recalibration. How can you recalibrate what you do, right? Maybe you do need a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance. There's nothing wrong with getting help, but don't be dependent on that help. Learn how to listen to your own system so that you can make choices as things change, as seasons change, as your energy changes. If you're set to go to the gym three times a week and you wake up and you're sick, there's no usefulness in going and putting yourself into high cardiac and aerobic intensity because your immune system can't fight when you're doing that. A little bit is better, you know, little walk, little bit of movement. But if you're set to do some great big boxing session and you feel like crap and you have a sore throat, listen. There's a reason why we have these symptoms come up. It's to listen to them. All right, I'm gonna end it there. Um, I hope this has been useful. I just know that based on what I've seen through all my years working in fitness and nutrition and movement science and now helping people um, with their trauma. Oh, that's one other thing. You know, a lot of folks are finding me now because of anxiety and chronic fatigue and depression, mental illness, all sorts of more what we would consider deep issues. And again, there's this lack of commitment and patience to learn the basics first, to feel, to learn how to feel your system. I don't think there's anything wrong with going off on an ayahuasca retreat or um, doing a 10 day retreat, you know, meditation retreat. But if you do not know how to listen to your body, things can go very sideways, very fast. 
but we want to go and get you know healed in this magical space really quickly but anyone that is consistent with exercise or eating or consistent in business consistent in any endeavor they will say that it's not something that can just happen overnight or in six months and january 1st isn't a magical time to start it's any time it's when you are ready know that this is not um, this work that i do what i talk about it is anti quick fix it is anti short term it is long term and it isn't always that sexy it isn't always hypey and exciting it's consistent long term work it might be slow sometimes it might be quicker other times it's about recalibrating and there's that word again listening 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 having the self awareness to know when to go when to stop when to push when to leave the room Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to this. Definitely check out the other stuff that I have on this channel and be sure to subscribe so you get the videos as they come out each week or even every other day. Okay, take very good care. Bye for now.